diabetics who take metformin in the long run aren't just better off for diabetes, but are actually healthier and protected against cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's and frailty, even more so than people who don't take metformin and who don't have type 2 diabetes. The ones that didn't get metformin will have bigger muscles. We don't want to be taking metformin on days where our muscles are growing. Welcome everyone. Today we're diving into an exciting and impactful topic. The relationship between metformin and exercise, guided by the groundbreaking insights of Dr. David Sinclair. If you're looking to maximize your longevity and health, you won't want to miss this. Metformin has been around for decades, primarily used to manage blood sugar levels in people with type 2 diabetes. But recent studies suggest it might also play a role in extending lifespan and improving overall health by impacting cellular processes associated with aging. But metformin is one of those gifts to humanity. It's on the list. So the World, World Health Organization has called it an essential medicine for humanity because it it's so safe. Um, it's not perfectly safe, but it's so safe. And the benefits are, are really clear, especially for diabetics. So there are th these three legs to the stool, the three pillars, sirtuins we talked about. We talked about mTOR and amino acids. The third one is called AMPK or AMP kinase. And this protein senses how much energy we have in the body. And if we have low amounts of energy, then it'll try to make more and that's actually healthy. So you want to also trick your body into thinking it has low energy. You don't want low energy, but you can trick your body. So how do you do that? One is to be hungry. One is to exercise. And the other is to take a medicine that inhibits mitochondria and lowers the amount of energy that the cell's producing. So the body goes, holy crap, we're running out of energy and it'll make try to make more. And that's good for you. Now, the side effect of that is having better blood sugar levels. So your body becomes what's called insulin sensitive. You know this, that when you're type 2 diabetic, your body doesn't register the insulin that your pancreas is putting out and it just makes more and more insulin and eventually your pancreas can give out. But the problem with it is you have high amounts of sugar, glucose in your bloodstream, which will cross-link proteins and accelerate aging and all sorts of problems, cardiovascular disease, wounds won't heal. And this is truly accelerating aging. We've, we've proven that uh, in our field. Metformin uh, is shown to be very effective against type 2 diabetes. And if you have type 2 diabetes, your doctor will typically put you on that medicine. Now, it comes from the French lilac. It's derived from a, a plant. So it's a xenohermetic molecule, actually. Um, and, but it's classified as a drug. So it falls into that category. So in this country, at least, but not all, you need to get a prescription for it, which actually puts it out of reach for many people. But it also makes a lot of people wary that if it comes from a doctor, it might be a little bit fishy, it might be toxic. But it, it really has been shown in a study of over 100,000 people now, many studies actually, that diabetics who take metformin in the long run aren't just better off for diabetes, but are actually healthier and protected against cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's and frailty even more so than people who don't take metformin and who don't have type 2 diabetes. That's it. That's stunning. Yeah. And when I heard that, I didn't believe it. My friend Neil Barzilai, Dr. Neil Barzilai is the world's expert. He told me that and I had to go and check on these, these papers, which I reference in the book. It's true. So I've become a real convert. And about two or so years ago, I started taking metformin. I don't have diabetes yet, but I was on my way up. I actually mapped my trajectory of the last... 11 years and I could see I was headed for diabetes. It's in my family. Um, so I stopped it in its tracks and actually reversed type 2 diabetes. I wasn't... Now I'm, I'm at no risk of having diabetes because I'm on metformin because I've made these changes in my life. Now is it for everybody? I think if you're young and your blood glucose levels are low, not, need, not needed if you're exercising and eating, eating right. But if you're... I'm 50 now. And if your blood glucose goes up every year and you can't control that, Metformin, I think, is a good thing to talk about with your doctor. Metformin works by activating an enzyme called AMC, which helps improve insulin sensitivity, reduces inflammation, and enhances cellular energy production. These effects are not only beneficial for managing diabetes, but also for promoting longevity. We're, we're working with a very complex machine, our bodies, and there are these three legs on, on, of the stool, but we don't know exactly which ones to tweak and when. We're still figuring this out as scientists. The good news is that we live in a world now where scientists can talk directly to the public 
and we put out newsletters so you don't have to wait 10 years to hear it from your doctor or 20 years. But we, the, the honest truth is we, we don't know exactly what the best combination is and we're learning actually that sometimes you don't want to combine them at the same time. You might want to do them on off days and metformin and exercise is a case in point. Now what we've just discovered uh, in a couple of papers that came out this year only is that metformin, because it, it tricks the body into having low energy by inhibiting the mitochondrial energy levels, if you give elderly patients metformin and give them weight lift, do uh, ask them to do weightlifting, they will bulk up both of them, right, both sets with metformin without, but the ones that didn't get more metformin will have bigger muscles, okay? But not a lot, not a lot bigger. They all got bigger muscles. Um, so it is inhibiting the growth, the hypertrophy of muscle. But here's what's not talked about on social media or appreciated by a lot of people. Those people, those elderly people, were all the same strength, even though they didn't have the same sized muscles. So it still gave them the benefits. They just didn't look as bulky. So that's where I go back to vanity versus longevity. But I think there is a way to optimize it. We don't know for sure. And Dr. Peter Otia, our friend, uh, he uh, argues this with me. And he also agrees, at least on this point, that we don't want to be taking metformin on days where our muscles are growing. That's probably the best, and that's what I try to do. I skip metformin when I go to the gym. But we disagree on exactly what the precise combination is. Uh, but he also thinks that uh, fasting for a long time is good. And I, I don't know if that's true. I find it extremely dif difficult to go for more than one day. I start to lose. My blood sugar goes too low, and I've measured it. Exercise, on the other hand, is a well-known longevity booster. It improves cardiovascular health builds muscle, reduces fat, and enhances mental well-being. But what happens when you combine metformin with exercise? Some studies suggest that metformin might blunt some of the beneficial effects of exercise, particularly in terms of muscle strength and endurance gains. This is thought to be because both exercise and metformin activate AMP, but they do so in different ways, and this overlap can sometimes lead to reduced exercise benefits. Despite these findings, it's essential to look at the broader picture. The combined impact of metformin and exercise might vary depending on individual health conditions, fitness levels, and specific health goals. But most doctors treat diseases. And you know, if you take diabetes as an example, most people will have increased blood sugar levels the older they get. And that's actually a, a very good sign of aging and how long they will live. But if you were to go to a a typical doctor in most Western countries, they would say, well, you need to pass a certain threshold to be a diabetic and only when you have a disease, I will treat you. You know, go home and don't eat so many potato chips and get off the couch, but I'm not gonna help you with the medicine until you actually have a disease. We know that a drug like metformin, which is, as far as drugs go, relatively safe, will delay type two diabetes if you prescribe it earlier. It's a very cheap drug as drugs go. Um, and so I, I'm encouraging people, doctors, to think about prescribing metformin before diabetes actually occurs. And it's a lot easier to prevent a disease than to try to reverse it. Scientifically, I'll tell you what I think and why I chose to. And that is that uh, I looked at the data in, let's start with, with animal studies. It's not always the best, but with animal studies, I was on a paper with Rafa de Carlo down at NIH, the National Institutes of Health, and we showed that metformin delays many diseases in those animals, and they, they do live uh, slightly longer. That's good. It's obviously not doing them a lot of harm. And then when I looked at the literature of other people who do, did studies on, one study was over 10,000 patients, veterans, that took metformin. Others, um, now 100,000 plus patients who have taken metformin, when they look at the risk factors and the at the actually the incidence of diseases of aging, not just diabetes, but other diseases, cancer, heart disease, frailty, Alzheimer's, their chance of getting those diseases went down as well, which is what you'd expect from a, a true longevity or what some would call an anti-aging drug. And here's the striking thing. Those patients were healthier having diabetes than people who didn't have diabetes. And that's remarkable. So what does that mean for people who don't yet have diabetes? I think it should be even more effective than those people who have been studied.
Now, the other thing is I, I'm doing a risk reward ratio always with, with myself. What's the risk of not doing anything? Pretty high, right? I know what I'm going to be doing 20 years from now. It's not going to be fun. I'm 50, I'll be 70 in 20 years. And But what's the risk of taking metformin? Well, it does have side effects that can be severe, but for most people, the most you'll experience is an upset stomach, which I'm prepared to tolerate and mitigate with the benefit of potentially having a much healthier, older age.